بدأ الإسلام غريبا وسيعود كما بدأ غريبا فطوبى للغرباء بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا مزيدا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We left off yesterday with a brief introduction on the hadith pertaining to strangers and we ended the khatira with some ayat that pertain to the topic We'll continue, inshallah, speaking about the hadith. An Abi Huraira taqal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, bada al-Islamu gharibah, wa sayaudu kama bada gharibah, fatuba lil ghuraba. Islam began as something strange, and it will return to being strange, so tuba is for the strangers. Islam began as something strange. Linguistically, the word strangers in Arabi, gharib, returns to the root غين, ra, ba. The linguistic scholar al fayruz Abadi mentioned 24 linguistic meanings to that root with its derivatives. Then came the linguistic scholar Zubaydi and he followed up with an additional 10 linguistic meanings for a total now of 34. For our purposes and what concerns us, especially due to these khawatir being very summarized, what concerns us is the figurative technical meaning, the contextual conventional meaning, the meaning that the Messenger wasallam wanted to get through to us. And strangers, simply put, means the people who are on guidance, the people who are far away from doubts and desires, the ones who attempt to follow the early generation of Islam with little or no help, support, or aid. They're the ones who follow the Sunnah and the Sahaba and free and clear themselves from all people of evil, deviance, and innovation. They are praiseworthy people. They are proudly referred to as strangers because they differ from the, their evil surroundings and because they are a small minority among mankind. Bada al-Islamu gharibah. Some scholars like Al-Qurtubi in Al-Mufhim, he said, that refers to the muhajireen who became strangers away from their lands when they fled with nothing but their religion. وَسَيَعُودُ كَمَا بَدَأَ غَرِيبًا means, according to him, the hardships in future time or times will become so immense and severe on the true believers that they will flee their towns with their religion like the early muhajireen did. And they'll become strangers away from their lands. In Nawawi Sharh Muslim mentioned a quote by Al-Qadi Iyad and I found a very similar one to that by Ibn Taymiyyah Rahimahumullah Jami'a What they said is the, the hadith appears to be general that Islam began strange with few individuals and followers then it emerged and became widespread and popular and supreme it will go back to being strange just as it had started Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, had yet another meaning to the hadith and he said the hadith may refer to the end of time, the time of Ya'juj and Ma'juj in the Dajjal when only few will remain on Islam and a wind will be sent to take the souls of the believers right before the judgment day. And what he means by the wind is the wind that's mentioned in a hadith in Sahih Muslim that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send a wind from Yemen softer than silk and it will take the souls of anyone whose heart has a weight of a grain of iman in it. Referring to the end of time. But going back to our hadith pertaining to strangers, it's general and it encompasses what Ibn Taymiyyah and what An-Nawawi quoted and what Al-Qurtubi mentioned as well as others. But when you dwell deep into this hadith, there's a few meanings that I wanted to share and bring to your attention. And that the hadith, first of all, is a miracle in the prophecy of the Messenger وسلم, because he accurately foretold the future. When he died, وسلم, as we know, people were coming to Islam in hosts and multitudes and crowds. You would think 
it would only continue to expand from there on in and become only more powerful and more popular and more supreme. But it's only a prophecy from Allah that he وسلم, would know that it would return to being strange again. In addition to that, the hadith is a glad tiding. The hadith is a glad tiding for the righteous strangers who face despair and anguish. The hadith is hope for those who feel hopelessness. It's a promise from the revelation revealed sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The inspiration that inspired sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The one who doesn't speak from his own whims and inclinations and desires. It's a promise of victory. And how do we, how do we understand that from the hadith? Because the phase that comes after being a stranger is a phase of victory and emergence, just as it occurred to the early first generation of strangers, as Muhammad Rashid Rida so beautifully pointed out. So the hadith is a prophecy. It's a glad tiding. And third, it's praising and encouraging the strangers to be firm because strangers desperately need that. The hadith shows the honor of those praiseworthy strangers, those clinging on the deen of Allah, steadfast on the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when they're deemed weak, outcasts, when they're looked down upon, when they're treated with hostility. But how does the hadith show its appraise? It's in the third sentence. That takes us to the third sentence of the hadith. فطوبى للغرباء طوبى is an encouragement it's an assurance it's a praise to help the strangers remain steadfast during dark times so what's طوبى طوبى is mentioned in the Quran but in a different context الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات طوبى لهم وحسن مآب ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما said طوبى is happiness and the delight of an eye Al-Dahak said it means that they're envied. And Nakhai said it means goodness and blessings is for them. Sibawai, the linguistic scholar, jumped on the contextual meaning here and said it's, it's a form of dua for those whom it applies to. All of those are very similar definitions. A form of praise, approval, encouragement for the strangers. Another definition chosen by another group like Sa'id ibn Jubair. He said, Tuba is a portion of Jannah in the language of the Habashiyah. As-Suddi in Ikrim and Mujahid said, Tuba is Jannah. Ibn Jarir narrated on the authority of Shahr ibn Hawshab that it's a tree in Jannah and the source and origin of all other trees in Jannah. Abu Huraira and Ibn Abbas in another definition, opinion, and Abu Ishaq al-Sabbi'i and others said it's a tree in Jannah. In Lisan al-Arab, the linguistic reference, many linguistic scholars seem to choose that it's a tree in Jannah from the various contextual meanings. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah in the 18th volume said a beautiful quote about Tuba. You really can't mention this topic without his fascinating quote. He said it means that those who become strangers at the end of time, it's not bad or wrong, nor are they bad or wrong. Contrary to what most people of their time are going to think. Rather, they are the most happiest of people. Because the hadith says, Tuba lil ghuraba. And Tuba is from Tayyib. And Tayyib means goodness. So goodness is for them. And he mentioned the verse that we mentioned, Tuba lahum wahusum ab. He said, Strangers are of the category of the first and most foremost vanguards of Islam who followed the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he was a stranger. And they were the happiest of people, meaning in this dunya, and more so in the Akhirah, because they are in the highest levels after the messengers. Then he went on to mention additional benefits for the strangers in this dunya. Pay attention. He said additionally for them in this dunya is what Allah mentioned and he mentioned numerous verses. Meaning these verses apply to strangers. Ya ayyuhan nabiyu hasbuka Allah wa man ittaba'aka min al mu'mineen. Allah said Allah is suffice and enough for you and to follow you. What he's saying is Allah is sufficient and enough for the strangers. 
Ibn Taymiyyah said, and also for the strangers in this dunya is, إِنَّ وَلِيَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِي نَزَّلَ الْكِتَابَ وَهُوَ يَتَوَلَّ الصَّالِحِينَ Verily, my wali, supporter, helper, protector, is Allah who revealed the Qur'an and he protects and supports and helps the righteous. What Ibn Taymiyyah is saying? He protects and supports and helps the strangers. Ibn Taymiyyah said, and for them in this dunya is, أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِكَافٍ عَبْدًا Isn't Allah sufficient for his slave? He said, and also for them in this dunya is, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ Whosoever fears Allah and keeps his duty to him, he will make a way for him to get out of every single difficulty and he will provide him from sources he could have never imagined. He means Allah provides for the strangers in a manner beyond their expectation or anybody's expectation. So in summary he's saying the strangers who follow the Messenger وسلم, Allah will honor them. Allah will suffice them and be enough for them and he will be their guardian and protector and supporter. He will be their helper wherever they are and wherever they may be. Ibn Taymiyyah goes on in his quote about this matter as if he's talking to me and you in the West today. He goes on to say, you will find Muslims who are firm in Islam in the lands of Kuffar they are in happiness to the extent that they cling firmly onto their deen. And if harm touches them or enters upon them, it's because of their sins. Strangers need an imanic boost from the ayat in the hadith that relay and pertain to such situation. And that's the purpose of these talks. Along with that are the statements and experience of scholars like Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, who lived as strangers. Let me say, it's not random or coincidental or some type of search that Ibn Taymiyyah did, rahimahullah, on the verses on the aiding and protection that he just tagged on to his writing. He's given textual knowledge, statements and verses. But knowing him, you can read in between the lines that he's sharing experience and specific verses that helped him get by when he lived this phase himself. Ibn Taymiyyah goes on to say it's imminent that people get hardships in this dunya. Everyone gets it. But what happens to the believers is much less and their blessings are much more. Look what happened to the early generation of strangers. The vanguards of Islam, the Sahaba. They were oppressed. They were harmed with torture. They were ousted and persecuted and killed. But then compare what happened to them with what happened to the enemies who harmed them and tortured them. They were annihilated later on. Their punishment and humiliation in this dunya was much more than what they inflicted on the Sahaba, the early first generation of strangers. We'll conclude with this uh, khatira and we'll continue on tomorrow inshallah after Asr. Jazakumullah khair wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.